my presentation will be basically on uh, the supervision of African space activity by African states. And I'll be focusing on South Africa, which is where I am right now. Um, South Africa has a number of laws in place. So it is really one of the countries that have uh, established its national law so that it can be, um, it can, it, it can um, put in place the, the, its obligations in terms of international law. It has the South African National Space Affairs Act. And then there's the South African National Space Agency Act, the Non-Proliferation of Weapons of Mass Destruction Act, the Electronic Communications Act, and the National Space Policy Act. The South African National Space Affairs Act. This one establishes the South African National Council for South Africa as the regulatory body for all space-related activities in the country to undertake the following. It's supposed to take care of the interests, responsibilities, and obligations of the Republic regarding its space and space-related activities in compliance with conventions, treaties, and agreements, and authorizes space activities. The type of space activities that are authorized are issuing licenses, amending them, suspending them, or revoking such licenses. Um, I won't talk about it here, but currently this law is under review. There's a new, uh, new bill that is coming up that is going to include other space activities that were not covered in the current one. Issues such as liability and um, issues such as the launching of, 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 of space objects. And um, this current one also regulates space activities, advises the minister on matters that, that have an influence on space affairs. Um, with with the, the many uh, activities that are taking place and the changes in the regulations, in the laws themselves, it's important that the minister is up to date with what is happening and how the country can really benefit from space activities. So it's important that the minister himself is on top of these matters. So the space council is the one that informs the minister on what is happening on the ground. And uh, the Space Affairs Act also mandates the minister to develop the national space policy that will be followed in the Republic. The national space policy is a grounding framework for South African space arena for all stakeholders, both private and public actors. And it's anchored on the overarching principle that the pursuit of space activity in South Africa should contribute to the economic growth, creation of knowledge and sustainable development. It informs the country's participation in space activity and promotes improved coordination and cooperative governance. It promotes capacity building, stimulates innovation and competition uh, and industrial development. It promotes attainment of greater levels of sales efficiency and international competitiveness and encourages all SA stakeholders to be responsible users of the space environment according to international regulations. And then we also have the National Space Agency Act, which establishes the National Space Agency. And it's to provide for the promotion and use of space and cooperation in space-related activities, foster research in space science, advance scientific engineering through human capital support, support the creation of an environment conducive to industrial development in space technologies within the framework of national government policy. This is a very, very important aspect, which is what the national agency really um, established to do, to promote an industry that is competitive and that can produce, um, create services 
that are relevant to the country. And uh, the, the, the Act also provides for the objects and functions of the South African National Space Agency and for the manner in which it must be managed and governed and to provide for matters connected therewith. You will see that um, we have in South Africa, the National Space Agency Act and the, 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 the South African National Space Affairs Act. The Space Affairs Act has, is, establishes the, the, the council and the, the South African Space, Space Agency Act establishes the agency. So the council looks to regulation while the agency looks to the program, the space program itself. And the strategy is the one that develops and promotes the strategy of space. So there's the, this two distinct um, uh, organs that are created to, to be able to manage space. Because if you could say space is in one, one, one port, then there will be duplication of effort and then there will be a difficulty in, in just laying out the ground properly as to what should be done by who, how. So the way that Africa has done it this way, it works seamlessly. Now we'll look at consideration, but in considerations impacting the creation of a legal space regime. We have to consider the increasing involvement of domestic and foreign public and private sector entities in space activities in South Africa. We look at the growth of the commercial space sector locally and internationally since, since the enactment of the act. A, a lot of, a lot of um, changes and developments have happened so far, which, uh, which call for a new, new, new legislation to factor in these changes. It ensures also, we need to also consider compliance with international legal trends in outer space. Many things are happening. We have uh, launching capabilities that are the countries that are coming up with launching capabilities. And uh, we, we are also seeing the same developments here in South Africa. And we, it would be important to encourage all these um, private entities to take part in faith. And in order to do that, we need to broaden what the, the legal act is providing at the moment, which is uh, not very uh, supportive to the private entities at the moment. So by expanding it, this, this uh, creates um, an, an opening for them to be more involved. And then also some consideration involve aligning the regulatory framework to the International Space Treaty. Yes, the act as it is, it's, it's, it's very um, aligned to it, but there were some, some matters that were not considered at the time that are now coming up. So it's important that uh, those are aligned as well. And then aligning the domestic policies and strategies. Obviously, when, when things started, some of the domestic policies uh, were not considered in, 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 in doing this. But now with uh, the stakeholder consultation and with, with the new developments that are happening, it calls for more, uh, more alignment, yes. And then we have to consider also minimizing liability risk and vulnerability for the state. Liability, liability is a very, very important issue. It's, it's a controversial issue because at the same time, you need to create a platform that is conducive and enabling for the private entity. But also you have to consider that the state itself must not be vulnerable. So as you allow these entities to, to, to take part in space, um, there has to be issues of 
third party liability? What is going to happen when there's, there's an accident? Who's going to take care of that? And then if it's the state, then how is the state going to be compensated? So this private entities have to be aware of all these things and, and, and be able to maybe take up insurance so that they can cover the liability of the state. So these are uh, issues that need to be balanced and issues that need to be considered and discussed. It's discussions, it's, it's these stakeholder consultation that help to, 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 to get the information out there and get the private entities themselves involved so that they understand what is being, what's being faced by their, by their country and what needs to be done and what action they also need to do. Next slide, please. Yes, alignment to treaties. Um, South Africa is aligned to the treaties. And uh, like I've said, but uh, one uh, aspect that, is, that really comes out is the, the council itself. For instance, the regulatory mandate for the council is this derived from the obligations under the international treaty governing the activities of the state in outer space. So as the custodian of this international responsibility on behalf of South Africa, SACSA seeks to ensure that space activities are carried out in the safe manner that minimizes risks to persons, property, and the environment by setting conditions for licensing to ensure that international obligations are met. So what are the difficulties in creating and enforcing the law? I would say um, it's not difficulties as such, it's challenges. Challenges of lack of awareness of these laws, lack of awareness firstly of space and its benefits. You find very few people understand space and its benefits and what the country really needs to do to, to, to reap this benefit very, very few. So it's important to create an awareness so that you get a buy-in from 